our Parsha, obviously, we all know is Todot, uh, meaning offspring, but obviously since the birth of um, of Ishmael and Isaac, we see this whole kerfuffle of offspring issues that take place. And like Abraham finds himself, you know, forced by famine to go to Gerar, to the land of the Philistines, which we're going to see this thing repeated over and over. And what's interesting also is their whole, uh, the whole cycle of Israel's existence from the time they came into the land uh, has also repeated this pattern over and over, and we see it even to this day. Um, he, he thought that his life was going to become in danger, he and his wife, uh, because he's obviously married to a beautiful woman, and he fears that he is going to be killed, and obviously Rebecca. Uh, can be taken into the harem of King of Imelech. And the couple uh, pass themselves off as brother and sister, and they they enter into a deception. And when Avimelech finds out, he is outraged. He's absolutely outraged. Genesis 26 reads almost like a replay of Genesis 20 that happened a generation before, also with Avimelech, says to Yitzhak, you have become too powerful for us. I want you to think about this. It's a key word. You have become too powerful for us. A familiar term. Centuries later, Pyro says at the beginning of the book of Exodus, behold, the people of the children of Israel are greater in number and power than, than we are. He says, come on, let us deal with them wisely. And let's, uh, let's, uh, unless they multiply and get larger and join our enemies in the next war, we've got to do something to these people. This has almost been the battle cry of the of of Avimelech from the very beginning. This is the battle cry of all of those who have uh, descended from Abraham, who have also exited the covenant. The same word, interesting enough, appears in these verses is atzum, meaning power. It appears in both cases. This idea of the Jewish people are too powerful mentioned in, in, in both of these passages are interesting. This is also one of the most common excuses for one of the deadliest human phenomena in our society today. What is it? Anti-Semitism. There are those who say God is only love. God does not hate. The God said by the prophet, I love Yaakov, but what? Esau I have hated. Malachi 1 says, because Esau the liberty chose to a course of wickedness, so the prophet says to Esau, they shall be called, the notice, the border of wickedness. It's found in Malachi, the first chapter. From the sides, uh, side of Esau comes Amalek, the enemy of God and Israel. As it says in Exodus 17, 6, God was has war with Emelec from generation to generation. Now, uh, as Steve pointed out yesterday in class, and I think that we've mentioned it in times past, that what we see in the physical realm or the physical part of creation in which we see um, wars and nations going to wars, we also understand that we get a snapshot of what Daniel shows us, that there are angelic beings that are the Hashem's managers of these regions, these 70 angels, and that they are also at some level of mitigating this war or allowing, making it permissible, whether I don't know that they actually fight together, but there is a spiritual resistance that goes on. Now, Asav is called what? A cunning hunter. Because he tries to pass himself off as a hardworking, reliable young man, the Midrash compares Asaph to a pig with split hooves. Now, the Midrash says this in Tehillim 80, verse 6, but inside his personality, he is 100% traif. He's not kosher. He's not a kosher human being. This is what makes the story of the Esavs, Esavs in the world so very dangerous. The world is full of Esavs. In the Torah, it is written, there were two boys— in her womb. The first to come out completely red and clothed in hair. So he was called Esau. 
after his brother, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was called Yaakov. This is found in Genesis 25. Esau is described as having a body covered with seer hair that is as uh, described as like uh, demons. Certain demons have this sort of hairiness about themselves. Now, I don't pretend to know anything about demonology, so don't ask me any questions on demons. I am clueless. I'm just describing what is found in the sources. So it says that the demons, that the hair, uh, that of demons, who are said to have uh, hair all over their bodies except for the top of their head, and they're bald, like they're slick bald. It is also written in the Torah, they also must no longer offer sacrifices that the people of Israel should not offer sacrifices to the Serim, which are demons, Vayakra 17.7. Now, the word for hair in this word, or or actually the, the word for hair, has the same root as the word in the verse above, demons. This is also a side of Esau. Esau has an evil side. We try, as a postmodern era, to make logic out of Esau's behavior. Terrorist, for example. At some level, many people in their um, postmodern thinking and their... uh, what they consider their higher intellectual values, I wouldn't say moral values, but higher intellectual values, will say, well, let's try to understand why the Iranians do what they do. Let's try to understand why the Syrians do what they do, and this group and that group, and they all have a grievance, and the grievance legitimize uh, the murderous things that they do. Well, the problem is, is you cannot make, uh, turn... Uh, evil into something logical. Now remember that Esau is called a cunning hint, a cunning hunter. And if you know anything about hunting or even in the military, like a tracker or a sniper, this is really an amazing deal. A, a sniper is able to disguise himself in the bushes. He's able to mask himself into the environment. No one has a clue they're there. And to see that work, is an amazing thing. I mean, you can watch it on TV. They'll show a sniper how they are hiding. And they're literally just, you know, 35 uh, yards away from the spotter, and he can't see him at all. This is what Esau is. He's He masks himself in a world of civility, all the while rotten to the core evil. Now, mind you, I n- normally do not like calling people evil and I, you know, you, you want to think of the best of people. But folks, we all know Timothy, Tar, Sandy, Mary, Rob, Avener, Kura. <sighs> Guys, we we know that there is evil in the world or evil men in the world. And it it is telling us from the very beginning that this is going to be the pattern until redemption comes. Remember, put in the back of the mind that this is all about redemption. Now, the Midrash compares Esau, like I said, with a pig with split hooves. So it looks right, but it's not right. His midot, Esau's midot, the midot of of the Esau's of this world today is 100% unkosher. That's why when people say, well, how can you tell the difference between the this side and that side. I mean, the Palestinians or the Gazans, they did this because of what Israel did to them with this. And we've heard this back and forth for, well, in our whole life, we've heard this, correct? We've heard this same thing over and over. But I want you to understand, if something does evil to others, and I'm not talking about a a, a righteous act of war, I'm talking about evil that is done toward innocent civilians is done, they are unkosher, period. They're trafe. They're evil. There's no way to disguise it. I can't say that it's decent or, oh, they're misunderstood. No, it's evil. I find it interesting that in our uh, modern times that we have what I call intellectual moralists, if you understand what I'm saying, who's not attached to real serious morality, can compare uh, uh, Israel or Israel's fight against uh, uh Gaza as an act of violence and an act of or, of cruelness, when in reality, war is war. It, this is what happens. And I, I sometimes get 
wrapped up. And if it's not careful, we got to realize back off of this and realize this has been going on since the beginning. Now, the sages tell us in the time to come that Esau will don his talent. What in the world does it mean? What does it mean that when he says he will don on his prayer shop and sit among the righteous in God Eden? What? However, God knows the mysteries of the world and the workings of the heart will see right through Esau. And the Holy One, blessed be he, will drag from him, from them, Talmud in Nedarim 12a. Things are not as they appear from the superficial reading of the text in our Parsha. It looks like Yaakov does, does evil by deceiving his father by dressing up and appear as Esau to get uh, a blessing from his father. Yitzhak intends to give it to Esau. Such an act would certainly have found great disfavor. But we see at this point, and, and this is not, uh, we see this is not so at the end of this Parsha that we end. Yitzhak sends Yaakov to Padam Aram to find a wife and bestows upon him Abraham's blessing that he will inherit the land. It says, quote, and Isaac called Jacob and blessed him, and God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and you multiply that you may be a, a congregation of nations and to give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed and with you that you may inherit the land of your dwelling that God gave you and to, gave unto Abraham, Genesis 28. Obviously. The actions of Yaakov did not find disfavor with his father, Yitzhak. From this, we can learn a lesson to apply in our own lives and in, post, in this postmodern era. In truth, Yaakov did, did nothing wrong as Yaakov was coming to the place of Esau to receive the blessing that he bought. He bought the blessing. Abraham bought the land, Right? You buy something, you own it. Now, however, we understand that even you buy something, if Hashem hasn't bequeathed that to you, you're not going to occupy it. But God has given it to the uh, people of Israel. It says uh, so. It, 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 it um, so the question is: Was it wrong for him to say, "I'm Esau," since we have bought the right to stand in, for Esau and get Esau's blessing? That he had already paid for it. Rivka and Yaakov actually selfishly and heroically uh, worked to continue the tradition of Avraham. They jeopardized their personal relationship with Yitzhak in order to save the future of Israel. Also, uh, Yitzhak's impersonating Esau is one of the stranger stories of the, of the Torah, which really still to this day kind of blows my mind. Now, the Parsha begins describing how Yaakov when he was born, came out holding Esau's heel. Because of this, he was called Yaakov, and which becomes a kev or heel. Esau has been fighting against Yaakov since that time he was born. It is written, in the womb he took his brother by the heel, Hosea 12.4. And we see from here that Esau tried to pull down Yaakov from his spiritual uh, his spirituality even before they were born. And this has not stopped to this day. Now, there would be some that would, would say, well, is it possible that the, the spirit of Esau is, is also within the Jewish community, like Jews that are, are putting on that part, but are, that, but are in reality Esau within themselves? And I would say there's probably a very good chance. God, remember, is at war with Amalek from generation to generation, even to this day, Exodus 17. It, at, in the end, Amalek, Amalek will be destroyed forever. Yaakov has the first to be the father of 12 sons who were all righteous, and thus he became the father of the Jewish people. It is explained in the Zohar that when Yaakov descended to Egypt, Adam's soul entered into him, until he came to Egypt, Yaakov's life was a long series of difficulties and struggles, like many of our lives. As Rashi lists them, and I will just go through a couple, the trouble with Laban, with Rachel, uh, his 
favorite wife and died at childbirth. The trouble with Deanna uh, was raped by Shechem. Simeon, who was detained in Egypt, trouble with Benjamin. Yosef demanded me brought to Egypt. It was from successfully dealing with those troubles that Yaakov was able uh, to reveal the neshama of Adam. And I would continue on, and I want to say this probably Adam, I mean, uh, Steve will understand where I'm going and kind of record this, but uh, just as he, uh, just as Yaakov enters into Egypt to reveal the neshama of Adam Nishon, Adam, so will Israel, after the Daniel 70 weeks, reveal the neshama of all of Adam in creation or in the in the world. It's coming, guys. Redemption is coming. We are so close to seeing this. At I won't go into detail, but it seems to be hinted to with uh, Yaakov bowing seven times to his brother before hugging and sort of somehow rectifying and establishing, okay, here's our, our distances here. There's almost a foretelling of things that's going to take place, of the troubles of Jacob. So when we hear the times of Jacob's troubles, folks, we, we can only imagine what that is. Now it says, when, when Yaakov arrives in the house of Levon, he was fooled at night. He, when his vision was impaired and, and, and everything was switched up and he was fooled, which is interesting how um, the dark side really loves to pull, pull one over on you. Isn't it interesting that he is fooled at night when he's blind? the same way his father was fooled when he was blind. I just, all these amazing stories are here. Uh, let me wrap this up real quick. Uh, Levon res, uh, responds, uh, we don't act that way here. We give our younger before the older is like, hey, you're, you're crazy. We didn't do this on purpose. We did this because it's proper. Now he remind, he remains in the in Haran with uh, Levon. It's de uh, deceptiveness for the next 12 years. Yaakov tricked his father by wearing goat uh, skin of goat in his arms. And similarly, when Yosef was, is sold by his brothers, his children tricked Yaakov into thinking that Yosef was killed with the blood of a goat. This is all obvious providence. Yaakov spends 22 years mourning the death of supposed death of, of his, his beloved son, Yosef. In this world, Yaakov, who is the Jewish people, only emulate or appear similar to people of Esau, the Western world, which is re representative by Esau, Esau's heel. This beginning, be, this being only a small part of their physical actions. Yaakov liked Esau, may work and jobs and eat food and produce, and yet only on the outward physical appearance does he do these functions. Like Esau, the foot represents Makut, the physical manifestation, yet even of this Yaakov only grafts to Esau's heel, not his entire foot. Only in appearance, sometimes does Yaakov perform physical functions. And we're talking about this as well as referring to the Jewish people. The Jewish people seem to be carrying the same physical functions as all the rest of humanity. But my friend, no, they have a higher level function in the world, in this world and the world to come and also in the world of Shemaim. But in the realm of emotions, thoughts, needless to say, spiritual motivation, there is no comparison between Yaakov and Esau. Spiritually is aware and partition, or, or participating in the return of divine energy and source through their prayers, through their mitzvot, uh, through their character. And the flow of this energy outward gives life to the world. It animates the world whether for healing or renewal or just finding a better taste for a food or a wine or a good night's rest, uh, Israel in their, in their, uh, in their um, practice of mitzvot bring in this illumination. All happiness in life is there. The process of returning is also called repentance. Such is the, the nature of the universe. Everything returns to its root which is directly attached to its source. It is to be attached to the infinite, the eternal essence of the universe, which is as 
a unfailing fountain of life that flows forever. As to Yaakov, the only purpose of being in this world and the underlying cause of all of his actions is to serve Hashem. That's why it says, and it will make, I will make you a seed and multiply you as stars in heaven and will give to your seed all of these countries. And in your seed shall all the nations be of the earth be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Therefore, we must follow in God's ways to hasten the blessing. It says in the Zohar that the, the world as is as a living body, that we're this world is an organism. This evident this is quite evident, actually, when we see that Esau showed complete disregard for his birthright and sold it there immediately. Had no second thoughts about it. He was going to die. If Esau is removed from his bond with es uh, ya ya Yaakov, he becomes Esau Harasha, I mean, evil Esau. If he has some association we see less of that. It says that in the uh, that uh, because of his disregard from the covenant and his lack of regard for it at all, uh, he also cannot stand that his brother has the covenant. And one of the biggest arguments that we have with um, um, Hamas and their charter is that Israel has failed to do its portion. They have failed to become God's people, and therefore we need to kick them out of the land. They saw this pattern over and over, and they figured, hey, this is true. At some level, they're not wrong, but where they're incorrect is God has decided to put them in the land, not them. God's not going to take them out of the land or force them to stay in the land. Nothing is dependent upon anybody else except for the creator of the universe. God decides that. Not the Palestinian people, not the Syrians, not the Iranians. So therefore, we see this pattern over and over and over. We shouldn't be surprised, but I want you to know that redemption's coming, okay? Like we're seeing the, this, the footsteps of Mashiach right before our eyes. This is an exciting time to realize that even though we see Jacob's trouble continue, don't be troubled. And I'm not speaking this to you because you guys aren't troubled. I think that you truly do see clearly what's happening. But to our friends that will watch this text later on in, in, uh, in, on YouTube, et cetera, uh, you're going to realize that better days are ahead of us. There is a change going on. There's an illumination. Remember, what appears on the physical in the physical realm is merely the superficial elements of what is going on in the spiritual realm. Okay? So there are battles being done, and you should feel good that there are good holy battles going on in other dimensions to protect uh, his people and to protect the righteous of the nation, and most of all, to bring about the illumination, the gathering sparks of Abraham throughout the, I mean, of Adam throughout the world. You are part of the rejoining of the sparks of Adam in the world. And this is an exciting time. This concludes my part of the, the shiur or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to open up the floor. <clears throat> Who would like to be first to comment, share, share,